From the studios at Soul Cafe Radio, this is Spirit Talk with the Wordmaster. Take a break and listen as we talk spirit to spirit. And now, to the studio and our host, the Wordmaster. Welcome back to Spirit Talk with the Wordmaster. This is your host, the Wordmaster. Today, we have a very interesting topic that I want to discuss with Jason. Say hi, Jason. Okay. So, what happened was, actually, uh, yesterday we were talking, and I realized that this whole concept of realizing what you want, a lot of people, especially now, because we have been programmed to literally let other things program for us. And so we watch YouTube and we watch Hulu and all these things. And we watch what's manifested there on these screens. We see what other people produce. We see what other people cause to come into existence. And I was wondering, can we actually, actually make a difference with our manifestations and in fact, that's something that I'm going to talk about because as we were talking, I used the word manifestations and he said that that's a word that we shouldn't use. So I'm going to ask him about that in a little bit. But another thing I wanted to share was that I was looking for this scripture for the longest. And this is our scripture focus for today, by the way, spirit to spirit. Matthew 21, 22, and all things whatsoever you shall act in prayer. Believe in, you shall receive. I'm to the point where I think persons, they read things like this, but they don't really believe that they could have what they're asking for because we live in that time where all of that is just somebody else's responsibility. You know, right now, especially in the United States, our government is taking charge of persons' student loan bills and all these things. So, you know, why even worry about that where my government's going to take care of it for me? Why even worry about me being the captain in my own domain? I let somebody else handle it so I don't need to dream. And lastly, one I'm going to say before I bring Jason on is dream killers. That's another thing I was focusing on. And the biggest dream killers I know for sure is not the fact that we can't accomplish what we set out to accomplish, but when we tell someone, you know, I want to do this or I want to do that. And they say, it's impossible. You, that cannot be accomplished. Don't even try. Don't even attempt it. People are, in my opinion, our biggest dream killers. And sometimes it's just not worth sharing your dreams and visions with another person. So that being said, I'm going to just open up to Jason. And first of all, question is, like I said, what... What, what was the reason why you said to me that the word manifestation shouldn't be used? I think that to your dream killer, I think the number one dream killer is usually yourself. Because we tell people our plans and goals for the most part to get support or encouragement. Now, I'm not saying that you're supposed to be there, if you will. Sometimes you have, there's a path you have to take a process. But I'd like to say from the off start, in my opinion, the biggest dream killer is yourself. The word manifest that I said you shouldn't use anymore, it's coming from a habit that we have when we're saying things that we want to happen. You're saying, I want this or I want to be in better health. I want to manifest this, whatever the topic may be. You're coming from a position of you don't have it. So that's why I said, don't even use the word manifest. I would tell people, whatever your persuasion is, as far as your faith, think like your God. Does your God say, I want this to happen, 
or it says, be it so. It never comes from a position of, I cannot do this or I need encouragement to do X, Y, and Z. It comes from a position of, it is. And you have to know this. You have to come from a position of, it is. And like I always say, words are not power. It is the feeling behind the word that gives it power. And of course, your imagination. So speaking of which, why, first of all, address the thought of why would you say or why did you say that a person is their own dream killer? Could you elaborate a little bit more on that back to the next follow-up question? Well, it's, it's like, okay, I want something to happen. And so you go back and forth in your mind that this cannot happen. Or the fact that you say I want something to happen. How about you feel like you have it? And you say, I have this, it looks this way, I see it in my mind, it's this color, it's going to have X, Y, and Z, or it has X, Y, and Z. Picture yourself in it, and come from it from that aspect. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that you um, don't go to whatever faith you're in to ask for these things, but you're coming from a position of, I hope. Get hope out of your head. Know that it is. Know that it is. All right. Okay. So thank you for the clarification. Let's talk about the steps and stages. What would be a person's natural progression of wanting something to happen and how does he go about getting it to happen? Well, to be honest with you, that's, that, I guess that's on an individual basis because my knowing how to do things might not be the, uh, another person or individual's way of knowing how to do it. For me, uh, I gradually got into this. It didn't happen overnight. I was just going to ask you that. But um, I went through some experiences, and the experiences that I went through was very necessary. In fact, I willed those experiences for myself. Because I was, uh, for the word we used before, programmed. I was programmed that life is hard. You wait till you get out and you have to pay bills and you have to do things on your own. You're going to see that life is hard. It's difficult. And I took that in my psyche. And so as I entered the world, life became very hard and difficult. I remember this teacher that I know. He sat me down and taught me for many years. And... I needed a job and I couldn't find a job to save my life I went I mean I went everywhere I couldn't get a job and he said I said man I really need this job. I'm stressing you know I really need this get, get a job I really need it and he said Jason what if you're not supposed to work did you ever think about that and I paused I said no I've never thought about that because all my life, all I thought about was filling out an application, doing the 95, saving, and that was it. Or at the time, I did think about making millions, but I had no idea. I thought, you know, you'd save and you do X, Y, and Z, and you come up with this great idea. That's a whole other subject. But the point of the matter is, I was stressing the job so much that when he planted that seed in my mind, it was then those years back that I said, I never thought about that. And you know what? After that seed was planted in my mind, I ended up living that way. Let's talk about what he just experienced just now. So there's a story in the Bible about God coming to Abraham when he was in his country, takes him from his country and brings him to the land of promise. And one day he was having a conversation with him and says, he said, God says, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect and I will make of you and, and so on and so on. And so Abraham says to God, God, what would you give me seeing that I go childless? Of course, having a son you know, or an ear was and still today is you know, a mark or a sign that you have made it. So God says, you will have a son and he had to wait though for a long time. So 
over the time, probably around 10 years, I think, at a time, he, he doesn't have a son. And I'm pretty sure he was expecting, like, probably next year, you know, his wife is 75, and at that time, she probably could, you know, logically, you know, have a child. She was barren, but of course, you know, God. But the question is, he he said after a while, you know, um, maybe God wanted me to have an active input in this because he says you're going to have a child, so he probably meant for me to go and work at it. So he he doesn't wait on God. He goes and has a wife through his he has a child through his wife's slave. So what I want to ask you is, okay, so I have a dream, I have a vision, I have something that really, I really want to give birth to, right? But God says to me, wait, okay, and it's going to happen, it's going to come to pass. But I'm of the opinion that, you know what, okay, God says, okay, faith without works is dead. So I said, I have to do my part. Do you think it would be wrong of me to at least, okay, say for instance, using the example you gave, you know, one in millions of dollars, right? So, okay, I have a little skill to do, you know, some type of work, and I said I'm going to start a company or companies, and in this way, this is God fulfilling that dream of me giving birth to my vision. What are your thoughts? Uh for those that are in the Islamic faith, in the Quran it asks, have you considered your beginning? And that has a lot of meanings. We have come divorced of spiritual power. If I were to say to you, you were here or you are before you came out of your mother's womb. A lot of you would say, no, that's not possible. But if everything is from God, for lack of a better term, and the manifestation, here we go with that word, with God is now, then there's no timing on that thought. So technically, if you really want to get down with it, we eliminate that word manifestation because everything simply is. So these companies that you're talking about, you say, let's say you were 12 years old and your family member came to you one day and said, you know, Vernon, you know, you could start some companies. You, you're 12 years old and they're inspiring you. They're giving you the ambition to even look that direction. And you accept that inspiration you go you say you know what yeah maybe one day i will open up a business or a couple of companies yes i think i will do that right then and there the thought entered your mind and right then and there you have those companies it's just that you've been taught that if you can't physically see it it's not real but i challenge people if it's not real what, what is the point of praying why do you pray if you're praying and you say, well, my prayer hasn't been answered because it hasn't gotten here yet, then that defeats the purpose of praying. You don't pray because you want things to happen. You're grateful because it already is. So maybe you should change your thought on how you pray. Maybe you should say, thank you for my great health. Because in your book it says, so a man thinketh, so is he. So I, I challenge people. I, I, I challenge myself too. Sometimes I, I slip. And I have to remind myself, hold on, Jason. Remember you, how you think. Remember how you teach things. And when the rubber meets the road, can you, you, know, can you do what you're, what you're talking about? So, for instance, everybody knows I like Jaguars. Would you believe that a seed was planted in my head when I was homeless because believe it or not <laughs> I was still partying and me and my friends would go to this club and we saw these Jamaicans driving in this gold like Jaguar four door I looked at that Jaguar and I was mesmerized I looked at it and I said you know what 
I'm going to have one of those. That was years. And then I ran into my teacher. And my teacher has the ability to predict things. He has this um, psychic, if you will. And he says, you're going to have a Jaguar. And I said, yeah, right. I ended up driving six of them. That's not to show off. I see something in my mind and I immerse my emotions and my feelings in it. Because like I said in the beginning, words are not power. It's the feeling behind the words that gives you the inspiration to even speak it. You must feel and use your imagination like you like your mind is a TV screen. And you feel like you're already there. And you're there. It will show up. In the physical, if you will. But in the spiritual, it's there. Now, it sounds contradictory, but it's one in the same coin. So you have to feel like it's there. Now, it, it may take some people time. It may take people a couple of seconds. I don't know. But for me, that's how I've accomplished things that I want to be as they would say, be, and it is. That's how I live life. Growing up, right? Growing up, a person has, okay, so I'm going to use a word, and you're probably going to um, challenge on that too, limitations on who they can become. Say they were born in a third world country, or, you know, they have, like, say, strikes against them. You know how people say, you know, color, you know, gender, other things, right? What kind of encouragement, what kind of advice would you give, again, 12-year-old me, as you were saying, right, in a possible situation where I only have dreams that, I mean, could you imagine, you know, growing up in a place where I can't even put two pennies together, you know, to make a dollar, and I'm saying to myself, one day I'm going to own Jaguars? Talk to 12-year-old me and explain how all of those challenges, adversities, whatever, could be, they don't even have to be when you are on that type of level. Let me just show you something. I, I'm, 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 Go right ahead. I, I'm, I'm going to have to get into it. Let me, let me put it to you like this. I remember when I was a child in England, we had this bike. We used to ride the bike, and one day the bike got flat, back tire. So it stayed flat for a while, but one day I went into the backyard, and I got on my bike. And I was acting like I was pedaling. And I was in a race. And let me tell you something. The bike wasn't moving. But you couldn't have told me that I wasn't in a race. I was so consumed in my imagination that I was racing. That even the neighbor next door was upstairs looking at me. I guess they thought I was crazy. But in my mind, I was in a race and I was having a great time. You're born with the ability of no doubt. People teach you doubt. People teach you no, you're not, which is one of the greatest, I would say, sins, if you will, is to teach your child, no, you're not, or no, you can't, or no, that's not possible. If you, uh, like, like the book says, Humble yourself as a child, right? Right. Your imagination is one of the key factors of what we're talking about. And the reason why we're trying to, as we're communicating, guiding ourselves through these words is because we're caught up in this imaginary state called physical, which is only... um, vibrating. So we see certain colors and we see certain solids. But the truth of the matter is, everything is vibrating down to your feelings and your thoughts. So I would tell the 12-year-old Vernon, listen, you are always going to be Vernon. Physically, you're going to have stages where you change, but your mind is a giant. And how you feel and think makes your reality. And for those that doubt it, I go back to what I say to everybody. If it's not true what I'm saying, why are you praying? 
Why are you using your mind to connect to whatever God you say is your faith that answers your, your prayers and delivers things that you say you want to happen? If what I'm saying is not true or not real or not possible, why are you praying? So I would tell the 12 year old Vernon, never doubt, use your imagination, feel that you already have that which you're seeking, which is a somewhat of a contradiction, but you're seeking with your mind and you're using your imagination with your mind and you're generating possibilities in your mind like a TV screen that these things are here and go forth without one ounce of doubt. That's what I would tell 12 year old Vernon because whatever you're doing now, believe you me, you thought about it years ago. And even if you put it like this, whatever you truly desire, truly, if you take a break from it, let's say you, you were doing something and uh, you had to get a job or whatever. Nine times out of ten, you're going to end up doing what you thought about years ago. Is that not true? The power of imagination. And that's why I said in the intro that today, people don't dream. In fact, you know, I've seen it in the Hollywood experience. People talk about it all the time. They're, they're rebooting old programs. They don't have nothing new to put out. Because people don't dream anymore. People don't have any expectations anymore. It has been, that part of us has been sapped. Which brings me to a very important question, Jason, but we're going to answer that on the other side of the break. You're listening to Spirit Talk with the Word Master. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Spirit Talk with the World Map. So before we get back into the program, let me just remind you to subscribe, like, share, comment on this video. And in the description area, you'll find more supplementary materials I'd like to do on this topic. And make sure that you download it. And also download the audio version. Go to the description area for more information. So before the break, we mentioned a very important subject matter that we're going to bring up on this side. So we talk about dream killers. We talk about whether it's another person or whether it's yourself. But the question I want to ask you is, what would cause a person to dump on a person's concept of, okay, I believe that I could manifest this, or I believe I could bring this to pass, or I believe or my reality, or I know that this is my reality, this is my purpose, this is my destiny, this I will build this into existence. Why do you think that a person would have that mentality to say, you can't do this, that's impossible? One word, fear. Fear. Let me tell you what that means. Fear, because one, whatever they believe to be how they do things, they're not doing it themselves. If a person is doing that which they say is true, they do not knock what a person is doing because they are already doing you never catch somebody doing, hindering others. That's one aspect. The other aspect is, if what you're telling them is true and it makes sense to others, then it challenges their concept. And that's all this is about. This is not about challenge people's concept. What I say to people is this. Whether you're a Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, whatever it is, take this idea, if you will, and infuse it with your faith it does not mean that you say the things that i say it means you really believe in what you say is true without any doubts see all these stories that you read in your books one story can stand out for sure if you have faith of a mustard seed you can move what nothing okay so that is an analogy of a small mustard seed with Mount Everest. It's to show your concept that it is not the size, but it is the faith 
or the knowing that makes the difference. I remember this movie, Star Wars. Luke, for those who've watched Star Wars, Luke is with um, Yoda, and he's trying to lift the uh, the down ship in this murky water. And um, he's able to move a, a stone a little bit, or a smaller stone, real small stone. He's able to move it. And he says to Yoda, I cannot do it. I can move the stone, but I cannot move, lift the ship with my mind. And Yoda turned to him. He said, the same energy that you're moving this small stone, same energy moves this big ship. Well, mustard seed and mountain is the same thing. You have to know that reality can be shaped by how you desire things. You don't have to walk around doubting. And there's some things coming. Oh, yeah. All of us are going to be tested. There's some things coming. And you're going to have to really have a peace within to affect your environment. There's some things I want to say about, I'm going to say it for the takeaway. But one thing I definitely do want to ask on a personal level, how have you been able to push aside all the doubters and to drown out all those negative voices to be able to get to where you are today? Well, I, I want to be careful how I say this because I don't want to come off a certain way. But this is what I say to people. If you want to know God, don't have a job. <laughs> That's what I always tell people. If you want to know God, don't have a job. And that has many meanings. So I don't want to say how I see it because I don't offend anybody. But I will tell you is this. I've spent so many years living the way I live. And it works. I remember, okay, true story. I used to watch the Bill Cosby show. And let me tell you something, I was very obsessed. What I mean by that is this. I used to look at Theo and I used to cry because I used to say, I can beat this guy. I can do this. I can do that character easy. And um, long story, I don't want to get into that because it's going to go into some personal issues about other people. And I don't want to go into that. But those people are dream killers as well. But I won't go into that. What I'll say is this. I wanted to do drama so bad. Years later, I ended up doing three, uh, three movies of my own and a local TV show. No schooling for it whatsoever. And the people showed up. It just came. I ended up executive producing my own, my own films. Had them in stores. So the way I do things, sometimes, don't get me wrong, I, you would think that I'm solid as a rock. Sometimes I go, whoa, wait a minute. Then I have to catch myself. Hold on now. Hold on. You went through this, 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 and that worked. Why wouldn't this work? And that's how I live my life. Now, don't get me wrong. You do have to apply yourself. Whatever it is you're trying to do, you, 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 if you want to be a doctor, you can't be like, okay, I'm going to vision myself being a doctor, and then I'm going to go to the hospital and operate on somebody. Right. I'm not saying that. Right. What I am saying is you must know that you're a doctor, and the things that you need for that to accomplish shows up. You remember this guy named Tony Hawk? Yes, I do. Skateboarder. Listen, man. He had a video. Because uh, for those who don't know, Tony Hawk is a professional skateboarder. And he ended up being so great. He did X Games and he has video games. And he's millions of dollars because of these video games of skateboarding. Where you can play as a character. Well, when he was a child, the, his, his family did home videos. You know, set of pictures. They did videos of their kids growing up. And they asked him, what would you like to be? I want to be a professional skateboarder. And they go, wow, really? Sure. Yep, you can do that. There was no sports back then for it. Right. And this guy said he it's documented. This is what he wanted to do. Well, he ended up doing that. There was no X Games. There was no um, sport of skateboarding. This guy's in the 70s, I believe. And he ended up being a professional skateboarder making millions of dollars because his parents fostered his imagination. They didn't kill it. They said, yes, you could do that. And here he is today. Thank you, Jason. And our takeaway for today is just reverse back to what we were saying earlier. Believe and you have. Believe and you have. And I want to... As we get off the ear, my audience, I want to challenge you. I want to put this out there. I want to challenge you. Like I said, 
I had a dream of being in some place I've never been before, talking to people I've never talked to before. And I want to challenge you to, if you have lost your ability to dream because someone stepped on it, and as Jason said, I said, your biggest dream killer is another person, and he clarified it and made it make sense. It's you. It's you. And it's obvious, but again, they are still in the category of dream killers. But it's not too late now. He just mentioned, now we have time. Begin again. Forget who, what, where, when. That was yesterday. That was yesterday. There's too much going on in this world for you not to take an active part in, for you not to have an active role in it. There's so much, so much that you could be a part of. I mean, just look at the universe, look at the galaxies, look at the star system, this grand universe of ideas that you can contribute. So many people in our world are, they wake up and their mind is tuned into destruction. Could you imagine you, you being part of the solution rather than part of the problem? But again, the things that stand in our way to prevent us. You know, those things that we talk about, they're already there. Believe it or not, I've come to the conclusion that they are. We just have to step into that reality. And as Jason was saying, you know, one of the things that we have to realize is that in classical terms, you know, 12-year-old me wasn't ready to drive that car. 12-year-old me wasn't ready to be a manager of that company. But guess what? 12-year-old me had dreams, visions, goals. And as I sit here, I can hardly believe it myself, but things are being fulfilled. And if I was to give up short of it coming into being, that of me being out of the picture and someone else stepping into that reality. And I've said to myself over the years, a mantra, you know, that it is my destiny to fulfill and no one else's. And I will not let that happen. If I have the ability to, if I have the breath in me to, it's going to happen. I, since, what is it, 2011, learned that I must emancipate myself from me being my own mental slave, being in my own headspace. And as I leave you today, again, I challenge you to dare to dream. Don't let anyone steal your dreams. Don't let even yourself step on those visions. You could be tonight, tomorrow, in a new space, talking to people you've never talked to before. But it's up to you. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't. You just heard the scriptures. You just heard them. If you believe, you can have them. Greater works are ahead of you. Don't let anyone limit you. This has been Burning the Word Master with another edition of Word Talk with the Word Master with Jason. Thank you very much again, Jason, for being here. I mean, you hit all the points, and I really appreciate it. And I hope that you appreciate it, audience. Again, like, comment, share, and please subscribe. We're almost to 500, and great things are going to happen once we hit that 500 number. And that's when it starts to be fun at 500. So if you become like subscriber number 500, something good, something amazing is about to happen to you. So hit that subscribe button, my friends, and just watch our next page. This has been Spirit Talk with the Wordmaster. Join us again next time as we have another conversation, Spirit to Spirit.